and I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Angelica Govert, and she is going to be talking about yoga for all bodies, and she is one of the wonderful of over 150 contributors to this week's Vegan Health Bundle, and she has an amazing course in the bundle that's worth more than the price of the bundle, so please welcome her to the show. It's nice to see you again. You have the best glasses of any guest that's ever been on the show. Well, thank you. Uh, they are... They're... These are progressives because I'm old. I'm going to be 50 this year. And um, so they were not expensive, though. I do want to tell everyone this is unrelated to yoga and unrelated to veganism, but it's just the best tip. I get all my glasses online at zenioptical.com. And these are progressives. And I don't know if you wear glasses, but they're I normally wear glasses. Yeah. Well, progressives are normally hundreds of dollars, like $500. These were $100. My bifocals were $20. My transitions were $20. So Zenny Optical is where it's at. I totally. I don't know what progressive means. What does that mean? Oh, so it's like, so instead of a bifocal with the line, it has three different levels. So you can't see that the bot, when I look at the bottom, it's for close up. And when I look at the top, it's for far away. Very cool. Yeah. Old people eyes. It's great. Old people eyes. Old people <laughs> eyes. So tell us about your offering in the bundle and also tell us if you don't mind what you like about the bundle because it's different every year. I always love being in the bundle. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's a lot of fun to meet all the different people that are in the bundle, but it's also such an incredible value for everyone who buys the bum bundle and is a part of the bundle. Like it's incredible to just think of all these people who come together and are like, all right, we have this one mission that we want to spread this word as far and wide as we can. And we wanted to make it accessible to as many people as we can. And each year the bundle grows and more people are in it. And this year it's bigger than ever before. So there's so many contributions. It's worth almost $8,000, right? It's just an insane amount of great things that you get for $49. Like that is a steal. And I love that Lissa, Raw Food Romance, and Nate, Raw Nady, they put in the Alive Lunch and I remember when she made that and how excited she was to go through it. And so if you are someone who wants to do raw vegan foods, but you're not really sure how to prep them, that alive lunch is so cool. It's like, not only does she tell you how to make the food that you're going to eat that day, but she tells you what to prep for the next day to make your life easy so you can really integrate raw vegan foods into your life. Because you know, and I know that at the end of the day, when you're hangry and you're tired and you're upset and you've worked really hard, you just want to eat. And if there's not something that's like right there, ready to go, it's going to be Snickers bars, you know? <laughs> Not that, not that I eat that, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying that like people are going to reach for whatever their comfort food is, whatever's easiest, whatever frozen Trader Joe's they can throw in. That's my thing. My weakness is the frozen Trader Joe's, mm, you yeah. know? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't checked out that particular course yet, but I didn't realize she was doing, telling you for the next day, that can be really, really a helpful way to do it. Cause I do remember when she did that series and it sounded fabulous where she made lunch, like I think it was every day for like a month. Yeah, it was incredible. I think it was 24 days. She was so exhausted. She was like, oh, we got another day. But she was also like just alive and so happy. Like it's a really incredible uh, course. And I think that's really cool that they did that. Yeah, all her stuff is great. I'm, I'm sure you've, you're familiar with her epic rap book by now. Well, I just want to say that I should be getting royalties because we were out hiking one day and we were having a one of her burgers in a lettuce wrap. And I was like, you know what? These are like hand salads. We, we ought to have, you ought to have a book called hand salads and it's just salads that you can eat in your hand. And then she made that book. <laughs> That's funny. You thought of the title. Yeah. It's a yeah. great title. Yeah. That's why sometimes people have trouble finding it in the bundle because they're looking for W wrap when it's, it's called hand salad hand salads because it is hand salads it's salads in your hand and I love it and I love it but she always next levels everything like I was just like you know make it lettuce wraps and stuff she was like no I'm gonna make these insane wraps that are like blue with 
you know, all kinds of seeds on them and they're incredible and they taste amazing. And she like, the coolest thing she did in that book was she weighed out the different ingredients. So like, you know how sometimes you'll read a book and it'll say like sweet potatoes, right? But you like, what is a sweet potato? Is it a big sweet potato? Is it a little sweet potato? They can be like this big, you know, like, what does that mean? But she puts the grams, how many grams you need of each of your onion, of your sweet potato to blend into that, um, the, um, the wrap mixture. And, you know, that's really helpful for somebody like me because one to, you know, Nate and Lissa live like a mile away from me. We live really close to each other. So they come over all the time to have dinner. And I was making Nate's, um, he made a Ninja Creamy book, right? And um, for the bundle and I made the lemon and I was like, you know, Nate, it's really tart. It's like, it's so tart. And he's like, well, how much peel, lemon peel zest did you put in there? And I was like, well, the zest of a whole lemon. He's like, it's supposed to be one teaspoon. <laughs> so I really over lemoned it. And we always make jokes about that. But um, so it's really nice to have like, what is the grams? Like, I love the grams of everything, you know, knowing like, this is how many grams of something I should put in. And weight is always for me so much easier than measuring. I agree. And it makes it makes the wraps foolproof. Cause like you say, one banana, well, one banana can be this big or this big. Right. Right. Um, the other thing I really like, there's an Indian cookbook in there. Oh, the, the North Indian cookbook by broccoli mom. People are loving that. Yep. Yeah. I love that. I love, like, I've always wanted to know how to make those chutneys that they never give you enough of when you order Indian food, the like mint chutney and the tamarind chutney. I'm like, how do I make these? And they're broken down in that book really easily. So I was pretty excited about that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's Well, tell us about your course in the bundle, because it's different than last year's. Yeah, I try to do a different thing every time because I want to offer um, something different to everybody so they get a new experience. So last year I did the 25-hour yoga certification, yoga teacher certification. And this year I'm doing a um, seven-day yoga for all bodies challenge. So each day you learn a little bit more about yoga. Uh, so you're going to learn about pranayama. You're going to learn about different exercises for different parts of your body. You're going to learn about some philosophy of yoga. Uh, breathing techniques, these kinds of things. So every day it's a little bit of something different. Um, and there's a little bit of discussion. And then there's a little video of um, how to do different actions, like how to do the breathing techniques or how to meditate. And um, I made them really bite-sized pieces because, you know, the bundle can be really overwhelming. There's so much of it in there. So I wanted people to be able to access this course and it to be very simple. So when you get into the course, it's broken down by day, but I also send you an email each day, just reminding you like, okay, today is what we're going to cover on this day. Click here. This is how you get into the course. And then one of the cool things about my course that I love because I just recently switched platforms and I'm kind of a tech geek. Like I love all the tech stuff. People are like, I'm bad at tech. I'm like, I'm great at tech. I'll fix anything. Um, and one of the things I love is that my course uses something called a magic link. So you never have to remember your password. There are no passwords. You can just click the link and it says, put your email in for your magic link and it sends you an email and you click on it and it takes you straight into the course. It's so simple and really easy. And that's my favorite part because I'm so bad at passwords. I don't know about you, but I'm the worst at passwords. Oh, but I, I, wanted... <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I just really wanted um, one of the things, and you know, unfortunately I recently experienced this. Um, I am, I had to really, I teach on the festival circuit to like to different yoga festivals. And sometimes I really have to advocate for myself and really fight hard to get in because I'm a little bit bigger because I'm not someone who's really thin. Um, I'm not, I'm not super overweight, but I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm super thin either. I'm like kind of in the middle and I don't fit the stereotypical role of what a yogi looks like. And so but I am very gifted and skilled at teaching yoga. I've been practicing yoga for 40 years and I've been teaching yoga for 20 years. And I love teaching yoga and I love bringing yoga to people who otherwise would have never done it. And so that's part of why I created the Yoga for All Bodies course, because people that are buying this bundle, I want you to know that it doesn't matter what size you are, that there is something for you. And there's a lot of things that go into why we might not be as 
thin as we are or as we want to. Like for instance, let's say you're eating olive oil. Well, olive oil is like very, it's one of the top foods that's modified. So oftentimes when you're buying something and you think it's olive oil, it's actually vegetable oil or canola oil or some other seed oil that's made with Monsanto's um, pesticides and Roundup. And Roundup is meant to explode the stomachs of bugs. So just imagine what that Roundup sprayed on all of our food does. And it's on our fruits and vegetables and it's on our um, wheat. And I grew up on a farm, so I remember when they came out with it. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are working against us and the companies are very good at marketing foods that look like they're healthy, but they're not. And so a lot of us are struggling with being overweight in a way that we never have before, just because of the food access that we have. And I know that we lived on the road for like six years. And um, when we traveled, it would be sometimes really hard to find healthy food. And surprisingly, though, there is almost always a Walmart in every town. And Walmart has an organic food section. So I shopped, and it was, it's a small section, but I shopped from their organic food section when we were like really remote in places, you know, like Laramie, Wyoming, and there wasn't anywhere near there to get any kind of, um, you know, food that wasn't ruined. You know, you'd think like you go to these rural areas and you'd think like, oh, there's going to be all this abundance of incredible fruits and vegetables and that we're going to be able to use all of these. But really like a lot of that is, you know, filled with pesticides and, and really modified and changed and doesn't work with the molecular structure of our body. So, um, I find honestly that Walmart has good prices and <laughs> a lot of people talk poorly about Walmart. And I understand it's, can, there's, I think you have to choose your battles in life. You know, like one time I tried to not wear anything that was sweatshop and um, that was really almost impossible. Um, or I tried to not use plastic before, like everything is plastic. The frames in my glasses are plastic. Plastic is infused into my shirt, you know, like there's plastic on the wristband of my watch. Like it's, it's everywhere. There's, there's no way you can get away from it. So I think we have to like, choose what are the things that are going to be important to us in this lifetime. And for me, one of the things that's important to me is veganism. You know, I started at 11 years old as a vegetarian. And then when I took my yoga teacher training, I became a vegan because I started to understand a lot more of what was going on. And a lot of people don't know, but yoga is actually an eight limbed path. And the first limb of the eight, the eight limbs is the yamas. And the, the first yama is ahimsa. And ahimsa means nonviolence. And it's always directly translated in all the major texts as vegetarianism. Um, in India, you know, they say that the cows are sacred there, but I have traveled to India and the cows are definitely still not in a great situation. But a lot of people in India are not in a great situation. So, um, but in a traditional sense, they did eat dairy. I don't eat dairy because I'm lactose intolerant. Um, and so, and we grew, we're in the United States and we do not treat our animals very well. I know I grew up on a farm and the idea that like, oh, well, on the small farms, they treat them. No, they don't. We I, I grew up on a small farm. The animals were not treated well. The animals were not treated well at the farm next to us, at the farm next to us, at the farm next to us. Nobody I think it's a cognitive dissonance thing. Like as the farmer, you have to like not be, you have to not look at what you're doing as something that's awful, because if you do that, then you're going to think you're an awful person and it's your livelihood, you know? So I think it's really hard to, to be a farmer. Um, there's lots of reasons why that's hard, but anyhow, so that's why I became a vegetarian at a very young age. And also Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney were vegetarians. And I was like, I loved Paul and Linda. I thought they were the most coolest people. And I wanted to be exactly like Linda McCartney when I grew up. So, um, I became a vegetarian and I got into the yoga movement as like a real, it really young too, around that same time. And then everybody then was a vegetarian or a vegan like everybody now it's not now people are all they eat meat and it's it's kind of weird to me actually because it's not part of the yoga philosophy in any way and most of india is vegetarian or vegan um and so um but the reason why we do that is because we want to keep our bodies clean and pure and we don't want to eat the fear pain and suffering of animals as it comes into us so it's in order so that we can meditate and be calm and peaceful. And that's in the yoga philosophy. So um, 
on a just a biological level when we eat animals we're actually eating the adrenaline and the fear hormones and everything that goes into them and then energetically that goes into our body and becomes a part of us and i often wonder myself like if everyone in the world was to become you know at least vegetarian or vegan like how would we how would we treat each other you know would there be any wars like would it all like be like chill and calm and more peaceful or is it because we're eating that fear pain and suffering that we're actually creating that in our world. I don't know. Humans are complex, but then, <laughs> but I just want everybody to have access to these concepts and these ideas and the ability, if nothing else, just to take a moment to chill out and relax in an otherwise chaotic world, you know? You know, I, I, I appreciate you putting in a plug for Walmart and uh, because I do not shop there, not because I have anything against it. I just don't live close to one. But I recently was hired by a very small hospital in the Midwest to do a virtual cooking class. And the caveat was every ingredient had to come from Walmart because that was the only store in the town. And I was like, well, how am I going to do this? They literally had everything I needed. So in other words, I didn't design the class based on what Walmart had. The class was already designed after, before they told me this restriction and I was able to find everything. And you know what? Most of it was organic. Yeah. And they have hemp seeds there. They have chia seeds there and some of the best prices on those things. Like if you buy those things at Whole Foods or Sprouts, they're going to be really, really expensive. But Walmart has, you can buy that stuff in bulk and you can get really good prices on it. Flax seeds, you know, they have like a whole huge organic section um, and, and natural food section. You know, you have to be careful, always read the labels, you know, make sure it's like so hard to make sure that nothing has oil in it. Like everything has seed oil, you know? So I'm always reading labels, but if you're eating, you know, carrots, you're going to, you know, for the most part, they're going to be unadulterated. Although I don't know if you've heard about appeal. Yes. We've had a lot of doctors on the show talk about it, especially Dr. Ron Weiss, who's a doctor and a farmer and he's not happy about it. Yeah, nobody is. But um, Trader Joe's has said that they're not going to do appeal. They've like come out and said it uh, publicly. So, um, and Costco publicly said they were not going to use appeal. So um, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Trader Joe's actually, if you have one near you, their fruits and vegetables are rock bottom pricing, like really cheap. Um, you know, their, their processed foods are obviously expensive. All processed foods are expensive, but um, they have a really like decent selection of organic and um, conventional fruits and vegetables. And their prices are insane. Last year we shopped in, we lived in Colorado year before last and we shopped at Trader Joe's all the time. And between the two of us, we did uh, McDougal diet. That's we did. Um, I don't, you, you know, Hannah, right. So um, I did for Hannah's course, I did the yoga for her when she did her monthly menu community. I was the yoga teacher for that. And uh, so we did McDougal that whole year because we were doing the monthly menu and uh, we bought all everything we needed at Trader Joe's for the McDougal diet. And it, we spent about um, $80 a week on the two of us. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You do yoga virtually or do you teach it in person also? Yeah. So I do uh, primarily online yoga teacher training. I do private instruction, one-on-one -on -one yoga teacher training with people at 200 hour and then the advanced 300 hour. So 200 hour yoga teacher training is for people who are wanting to become yoga teachers and they have no training. They don't know a lot about yoga um, and they need to get all the basics and learn how to do sequencing and all that. My course takes you from knowing absolutely nothing about yoga to knowing everything to confidently teach a class. Uh, not all of the 200 hour teacher trainings out there are like that. Mine is. Um, but the 300 hours more like your um, master's degree in yoga. So it kind of goes deeper in. So those people are already people who have been teaching a little bit and they already have their 200 hours. So those are my two main things that I do. That's, that's what I spend most of my time with. I have 20 clients right now, so I'm pretty busy. Um, I only usually take on 16, but I really like everybody that interviewed, I was like, I really want to work with you. So <laughs> I took them in anyway. Um, and then I have some online courses that people can just purchase that don't, you know, they don't work with me directly. They, uh, work with me through the, the virtual, but I recently started teaching at the yoga studio that I used to own and I might be buying back into it. So I don't know. I'll find out by the end of the month on that. I'm like, how many things can I do? But, um, 
but I live here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I do teach at Sin City Yoga on Tuesday nights and on Saturday nights. And I travel and teach at the festivals. I'm teaching at the Yoga Expo this weekend in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and the next weekend, I'll be teaching at the Sedona Yoga Festival. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's my first time at Sedona Yoga Festival. It's a really big festival. It's a great honor to be teaching there. So I do travel and teach. Um, I teach workshops at different studios. I do retreats. I have a retreat coming up with Lissa. Lissa and I are doing the retreat. Well, it's my, it's my retreat. Lissa and Nate are making all the food. We have only two spots open for that. Um, somebody just took one. We had three spots. Somebody took one of the last ones last night. So we have two more spots open. It is in August in Sedona. We rented a huge house and it's going to be uh, 12 people plus me, Lissa, Nate, and my assistant, Francesca. And we're all going to do yoga and eat raw vegan food and swim and be in the vortex and talk business and make videos together and build up people's yoga businesses. And uh, Nate and Lissa are going to do some um how to uh, make food. And we're, you know, hoping that Nate makes us nice cream and it's going to be a really great time. So we're super excited about it. And I'm glad that Lisa and Nate agreed to make the food for me for my retreat. <laughs> that's very cool. And that's going to happen in Las Vegas. That is going to be in Sedona, Arizona. Sedona. And, and is that information in the show notes for people to sign up? Um, it is on my webpage, www.angelicagover.com. And that is in the show notes. Yes. Nice. And um, the kind of yoga you do, you know, there's different kinds of yoga. There's restorative, there's nidra, there's yin, there's flow, there's hatha. Look at you. Look at you. you know what? And my favorite is yin. I love yin and I love nidra and I love the real kind of, you know, I don't like the hot, sweaty ones. So what kind is in the course and what kind do you do primarily if, if you focus on one? Yeah. So I teach um, like 11 different styles of yoga because I'm a teacher trainer. So I teach people how to teach different types of yoga. Um, and I have courses on yin, restorative, ashtanga, vinyasa, um, and uh, hatha. My main focus in the in the all, yoga for all bodies is just like a basic, regular hatha yoga comes from Krishnamacharya, one of the original types of yoga. Hatha was the original yoga. There was no yoga. It was everything was Hatha from the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. And then Vinyasa Yoga started in the 1900s. And then that became Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga is what all of the flow yogas that we do are based off of. And then there was another teacher named Ayengar. And basically all of the yogas that we do that are not flow yogas that are like more um, your yin yoga, your restorative yoga, your... Um, Hatha yoga. These are all come from BKS Iyengar. And then there was this guy Bikram who is very controversial and he kind of changed a lot of the things and he turned on the heat. And um, we could talk about that for days. I'm not a big fan of it. It's not really great for your body, your ligaments, your tissues. There's a lot of, it has the number one injuries. People die. They're pretty regularly doing that. Um, but you know, that's not what this is about. If you like hot yoga and you really enjoy it, keep doing it. It's not for it's definitely not for me. And it's, um, you said it's not for you either. I don't, I always feel like sick. After. I didn't care for it. It made me physically yeah. sick. And I actually took a class with him and I didn't like it at all. And I know some, <laughs> some people love it. So if, if you love it, do it. Yeah. But I could regularly, immediately when I saw him, I, the first time I ever saw him was at the Hilton in Las Vegas, um, like maybe 20 years ago. And immediately I just was like, he is not a good person. <laughs> I could just tell. <laughs> Well, it seems to me though, that you're unnaturally heating your body and it's going to make it stretch more than maybe it's even capable of stretching. That is exactly true. That is exactly what happens. And that's why there's so many injuries. Um, and you know, um, it's okay to like warm the room a little bit, you know, like maybe Baptiste style. He does it at like 80, but anything over that, you know, it, and it comes from being an athlete. Like when I was younger, I was a marathoner and a triathlete and, you know, you just don't heat a muscle and then stretch it. That's, it's not, that's actually not the way it's the other way around, which is why yin yoga is always done in a cool room. So yin yoga was created by a man named Paul Grilly in the 1990s in Montana. Um, Paul Grilly is an anatomist and he created yin yoga to work with the connective tissue. So it's actually not meant to be an easy yoga. It's meant to be a very challenging yoga. Most people don't teach yin yoga correctly. They're usually teaching restorative and calling it yin. Yin is actually, you hold the postures for 10 to 11 minutes each yeah. and you stay in alignment. You don't like, 
in, in restorative, you just kind of release and let go in yin, you hold those postures in alignment so that you're working with bone compression, fascia, um, your ligaments, your synovial fluid, because 30% of muscle tension is actually tight fascia. It's actually the webbing around our muscles that is holding it tighter. So yin yoga is meant to be very effective on loosening that fascia. That's why I like massages with cupping are so releasing because they're working on your fascia to release your fascia. Nice. How, how much do you practice daily for yourself, for your own practice? And what do you do? So I practice every day. Um, I primarily practice meditation is my favorite thing to practice. Um, I do practice a little bit of asana. Sometimes I will go live on it. My favorite style of yoga to do is Ashtanga. Um, I don't always do it. I It's what I've done since I was a really young child. And so I really like it. Um, and then sometimes I just organically move now, you know, I've been doing this for so long that I just, sometimes I'm just like, okay, this is what my body's feeling today. And that's really the main thing about yoga is that it's meant to help you to, um, get a better understanding of your own body and notice when things are off, you know, like one of the things that I think is always fascinating is when people, are, they know before their doctors know that there's something wrong with their body because they're so in tune with it. And if we're eating the standard American diet and we're not doing mindful practices like yoga or meditation or nidra, we're not slowing down and getting in touch with our bodies. And that that connection that we have with our body, like we know better than everyone else. You know, we know when we feel sick, we know when we don't feel right about something, we know when a food isn't working for us. Like it's been so helpful to me to keep a food journal and like every time I eat, be like, how did that affect me? And that really like allowed me to, to start to figure out what foods went with me and that I like to eat, you know, and, and why certain foods made me feel bad. Like I know that if I eat tomatoes that are day old, like after they've been cooked, I'm going to have gastrointestinal issues. Right. But if I eat them like fresh cooked the first day, they're good. I just can't have them the second day, you know, and, but that's something that's unique to me. Right. And so, but I know my body well enough from practicing yoga for all these years and that's really the essence of yoga. Like you're always practicing yoga. It's not just a physical practice. It's these eight limbs. And I talk about that in the seven day yoga challenge, like that there are eight limbs of yoga. There are multiple things that we do on the path to enlightenment, which is the final step in yoga. And there are seven levels to enlightenment and you can achieve some of them in this lifetime. If you're really interested in this stuff, I do talk about like resources that you can go to and do the next thing in my seven day challenge that's in the bundle. So I highly suggest grabbing the bundle. This is not something that I sell outside of the bundle. It's it's just for the bundle. Um, I did not release it to the public and I don't typically do that until after the bundle. So um, always everything that you can get for me in the bundle is like a special for the bundle. And then I sell it afterwards. So you can't even get this. It's all new. It's just for the bundle. <laughs> Nice. Well, thank you for doing that. And I want people to know that even though there's over 2000 recipes in the bundle, it's not just recipes. We have Angelica's yoga course. There's other fitness courses from Ella Majors. There's a decluttering course. So there's a lot more than recipes, but if recipes are your jam, we got you covered as well. It was so nice to see you again. I, I hope I can come to Vegas sometime and meet you. Lisa's is going to be coming to visit me here in uh, May. So I get to meet her in person. For we the would love to have you in Vegas. You know, we almost moved there and then they had that shooting and I'm like, I don't know. So we ended up choosing Vegas, but boy, that would be so cool. Well, you just accidentally said you ended up choosing Vegas, which says to me that that's actually where you want to live. But <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we could, it's definitely, it's very affordable. You can get a big, beautiful house. Well, it was affordable until all the Californians move here. It's pretty expensive now. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's much more expensive than it used to be like by more than double. Like I used to pay a thousand dollars a month for a three bedroom. Now that same three bedroom is 2,500 a month. Wow. So it's, it's catching up to California. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Californians. 
You're so lucky to get to hang with Lisa and Nate. Do you ever hang with John Kohler too? Cause he's a Vegas. Yeah. Fan. He's been over to my house. He's come to some parties at my house and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's pretty cool. I just bought a juicer from him. Um, I finally got a Nama juicer. Like I finally oh, broke God, down and got you, one. That's funny that you got the Nama. Cause I was just watching a video of his today where he talked about the Nama knockoff that he actually likes. That's a third of the price, but he's using it for travel, the tri best. So I was going to check that out. So yeah, I love his mm -hmm. videos. Yeah, I love his videos too. Yeah. Well, thank you for putting the wonderful courses that you do in the bundles. We really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me in the bundle. It's it's absolutely my pleasure and honor. I appreciate yeah, you. Fun. Thank and you so I much have... for having me on the show. And how long do people have to sign up? Because they have a year to download the bundle, but they can sign up even a year from now for your course if they wanted to. Well, as long as I am doing, as long as I'm doing online courses, like I never say like lifetime access, right? Because I think that's a marketing gimmick and like, you know, like in 10 years, if I'm not doing this, I'm not going to keep paying to have an online platform or, you know, like after I die, I'm not going to put in a trust that I'm going to keep paying for my online platform so that you can download it. Um, I really think that, um, you know, like I keep it open as long as I'm doing this, but I really think people shouldn't wait on things like go out and do the things that you really want to do, because you never know when your life is going to end. And you never know, like, if you're going to always be physically capable of doing things, or if you're going to be in the right place, like, don't wait. If there's something that you have a dream for, and you really want to do like becoming a certified yoga teacher or changing your diet and becoming healthy and doing the things that you know are true to your heart do them right now don't wait do them now live your dream you know it's it's life is short live your dream that's a great way to end thanks so much angelica thank you so much chef aj i appreciate you if you'd like to get the bundle from angelica i've been putting her link right below this video in what's called the show notes as well as the chat and please come back in about 25 minutes for another wonderful bundle contributor. This is not a food related one. This is Andrew Mellon. He's considered the most organized man in America, and he's going to show you 40 ways to declutter 